Hello everybody and welcome to Costume Quest 2 from Double Fine, the direct sequel to Costume Quest, which is not so common in gaming nowadays that the second game directly precedes the first game, unlike a lot of games that have, you know, are number two, but are actually the fifth in the series. But I digress. Let us begin fairly quickly by going into the most creative menu system that I have seen as of yet. And it is right here. I know, a little hard to, hard to see, but this is actually the main menu. So you go to the different portals to get the different things. So we got the exit to windows, we have options, and we have start a game. And I thought this was really creative when I first saw it. Let's take a quick look at the options, as is there aren't that many. We have how to play, which is the standard, well, just basic background of the game, how to play it, that kind of stuff. You know, if you played Costume Quest 1, you're pretty much familiar with that. Controls, which is actually the controls for the Xbox 360 controller, but key bindings, ooh, is also for the Xbox 360 controller. That's actually pretty sweet. You can actually rebind the keys. However, if you use the keyboard and mouse that I do every once in a great while, it will actually let you rebind the keyboard. It's smart enough to recognize your changing controls on the fly, which is really, really cool actually but i have played this game for about four hours with the keyboard and about well about up to five hours with the controller and i'd have to say that this game is designed to be used with a controller specifically with the xbox 360 controller as i will show you here shortly we have audio and video settings music volume sf or effects volume brightness slider basic video mode you know, resolution, that kind of thing. And then we do have a little bit of advanced. We have full screen. We have SSAO, which I have absolutely no idea what it is. Uh, shadows, reflections, V-Sync, and 60 hertz. And I have no idea why there's a distinction outside of possibility that your screen, it might actually try to V-Sync to maybe 120 hertz, I guess. I don't know. And then we have the standard anti-aliasing settings. Yeah. I don't care about any of these. This game runs pretty solidly at 60 frames per second for me, which is unusual when I'm running something with V-Sync activated. Normally when I'm playing a game with V-Sync activated, it's running about 58, 54, which annoys the living hell out of me. It always takes more power to V-Sync than it does for me to just let it go. I can get, you know, 120 FPS, but when I go V-Sync, 54. Annoys the hell out of me. But I don't have a problem with this game. This game runs fairly well. And then, of course, we have credits. Which, if I click on, I get the credits in an interactive kind of sort of way. Okay. I never clicked on the credits, so I never saw that before. So let's get started into the game. And as you can see, I have two saves already. Uh, this one, 7 hours, 14 minutes, and I beat the game. Well, actually, this is just short of beating the game, since you can't really save after you beat the game. Um, so, but it's not that long of a game. If you're really, really dedicated, you could probably beat it in about 4 hours. But it's an RPG, and just out of sheer habit for me, I play RPGs very explory. I guess I explore a lot when I play RPGs. Uh, this save I have set up beforehand as I was playing. Because it's in a very good position to show off the game. It's very early on in the game. I am still on the first level, but it's like the third or fourth section. I am in what's called the French Sector. And it's just a little town in the past. Yes, in the past, this game is about time travel, which annoys the hell out of me. I'm sick of time travel. I got sick of time travel watching Star Trek Enterprise. I'm done with it. 
but we got the basic running around kind of thing. We have our Heelys that we could slide around on, but if you notice, you don't have to be the robot to use them, which is cool because you don't get the robot costume until the very, very, very end, and it doesn't do anything. But yes, you can do this no matter which costume you're in. And yeah, as you can see, I do have the candy corn costume. You start with the candy corn costume. It does nothing, but I'll show that here in a second. Uh, we have the special costume skills, like I'm the clown right now and I can do this. I can annoy people. And that, yeah. The horn is useful. It scares away birds that block the path. It scares away gators that block the path. As silly as that sounds, it actually is part of the game. Um, let's see, what else do we got? We got... I have the pterodactyl costume, which I will flip to real quick, because it's got a different one. I can blow wind. Yeah. It's actually useful for getting uh, piles of leaves out of the way, because apparently you're a kid and you can't just jump into a giant pile of leaves, but, you know, whatever. Um, but as you can see, I have four costumes, but I'm still using the candy corn costume. There's a reason for that, and that is because the candy corn has an achievement attached to it. If you go through the entire game and have every single battle with a candy corn costume in your party, it's an achievement. So I'm going to try it the second time around. Ah, as is normal, we have Shady here. He can sell stuff, but it's not stamps this time. It's cards. And basically, they're cards you can activate in the middle of a battle and get special little features. Like this one lets you take two turns instead of just one. Well, a specific player take two turns instead of one because using these cards takes up a turn. You know, this one doubles the candy reward after a battle. This one cuts the minion's health in half each turn. You know, the enemies, that kind of thing. But there are also upgrades. You can upgrade your costumes. This one increases the clown's regeneration abilities. So it, you can heal other people better. Uh, superhero, you become stronger. You know, and each costume has different upgrades to it. Like the candy corn has a chocolate layer that will increase its defense, and it's pretty cool. So, what do you do in Costume Quest 2? Well, you go trick-or-treating, just like in the last game, and here we go. Trick-or-treat, and it's a baddie. I could tell because the door opened really slowly. In the first level, before the first boss, the if the doors open really slowly, it's a baddie. If the doors open quickly, it's just candy. I don't know if that was intentional or a glitch. Not sure. Doesn't really change gameplay whatsoever. I've just noticed that that does that. Okay, so as we can see, we are giant again, just like last time. But there is a slight little difference about how to play the game. In the first game, it was all about quick time events, different quick time events. Sometimes it would be a slider that you would have to hit at the exact right time. Sometimes you would just have to hit a specific button, so on and so forth. This is slightly different. What it is, is each character is designed, uh, assigned a key. So the top character right now is assigned the key Y, the middle one is X, and the bottom one is A, or one, two, three, if you're on the keyboard. And what you do is you you can pick with the arrow keys what you want to do. You select with Y, and then it's all about timing. And it's kind of like DDR, Dance Dance Revolution, where you time it right. The better your timing, the more powerful the attack is. You can have a standard nice, or you can have... Amazing, which is actually kind of hard to get. I'm not that good at it. And then Candy Corn does nothing. Defense is the same exact way. Now, what you got to do is you got to figure out which one is being attacked and then hit that button at the appropriate time. Which is an interesting little game mechanic. Was not around in the last one. All you would have to do is just, you know, hit this button at the right time and it would tell you which button. And it was just really quick time event. This one's a little bit more controlled. 
because you know which buttons are assigned to which player, or at least which position. So it's a little bit easier to actually play this game, and I quite enjoy it. I like it a lot. Now, also with this, just like in the last one, there are limit breaks, which you have to charge up by either hitting or getting hit. Now, I don't know if both of those were involved in Costume Quest 1 to build up your limit break. Poof. Candy corn is over it. And there is seemingly unlimited supply of candy corn jokes. I don't think I've seen one repeated yet. And I've played a lot of battles already. You can upgrade your fighting style. Like when you start, you get one hit. Then you go back and you can learn another hit, which is what I've been doing, where I hit once and then I back up and then hit again. You can also learn a counter attack. When they attack, you c if you press and hold the block button and charge, and then release it at just the right time, you can counter attack. And it's really cool. That's a slow opening, that's a baddie. It's a cat wizard time shard thing that I don't think I fully understand. But, you know, whatever. But I do quite enjoy this game. I am enjoying this game. Uh, as I said, I've already beaten it, and I did quite like it. There are a lot, and I mean a lot, of puns in this game. It's just endless, endless number of puns. Let's use our clown special attack. Laughter is the best medicine. And what it is, it's a healing attack. And you get your standard cutscene-esque thing that you can skip. I don't remember being able to skip them in Costume Quest 1, but you can skip them here. Let's do our Sweet Justice. This is the attack one. It's a multi-attack one, so it attacks all enemies with a bus full of candy. And then there's Candy Corn. Yeah. The Candy Corn does nothing. I originally thought maybe it drew attacks. You know, more pe they, they attack the Candy Corn more often. But, no, I think the candy corn literally does nothing. Nothing useful whatsoever. Now, it's not a bad thing. I'm actually kind of glad that they threw that in there, a completely useless costume. It's just a weird thing that you would expect from Double Fine. It's a very, very strange thing, and I keep hitting the wrong buttons. Talking and playing at the same time always gives me problems. It's two outputs at once, and I'm not good at that. But for the most part, this is pretty much the game. Okay, you go somewhere, you get candy, you fight some things, you go somewhere else, you get some candy, you fight some things. But you know what? It's, that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, it's repetitive. It's definitely repetitive, which is why I actually did a very large chunk of this before I started this video, I actually recorded my first impressions of this game. And it was an hour long after I cut it up from about three and a half hours. Um, I didn't like it, so I chucked it. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, you know how in Costume Quest 1 you, re you healed yourself between battles? Well, it doesn't do that in Costume Quest 2. You have to heal yourself. So this is more like an RPG that we're used to. But there are fountains pretty much everywhere in the world. I'm fully healed. Status effects don't seem to continue from battle to battle. So like if I was poisoned, I wouldn't be poisoned in the next battle. But poison doesn't exactly last that long to begin with, so not that much. Yay, it's a lady with those wax teeth things. Potatoes. Yeah, that's an upgraded candy bag that I got from finding a bunch of children hiding about. Yep, it has that in this game as well. I think I got two more. This one, and then I think I got one more after this one that I gotta go trick-or-treating at. Just basically want to show the basics of this game. 
Uh, this is a band that I performed in with my horn. Yes, that horn. Oh, there's two more here. Battle or new battle? And it's too fast. You're lucky. I still have some candy left. B busy Halloween this year. Potato. And one more. I've already run through this area, and I picked up all of the secrets that I could find. There are a lot of secrets. Uh, there is, as far as I can tell, one costume per level strewn about that you have to run around and find. Uh, at least one costume per level. I think I got one costume per level, but I'm missing one. So, obviously, there's a hidden costume somewhere around there. Just like Costume Quest 1, uh, the DLC, the hidden costume was the eyeball that we saw at the very beginning in the menu there. Um, I did eventually find that one. Went back, played it today, just to make sure that I actually knew what I was talking about when I said, when I compared this game to the previous game. And it's not as different as I remember it being, but the game style is definitely changed. Not by much. And I do like this change. This is a very good change. Um, bouncy, bouncy smack. Now, there is... A very good reason why I did start here instead of somewhere else, for example, like further on in the game. Like I said, this is very, very early on in the game. The reason that I started here is because this is a perfect spot to show off most of what this game is. A lot of fighting, mostly, and a lot of getting your butt handed to you. But you get a general idea of the subtle humor, I guess I could say that. Uh, there... I, I said this before, there is a lot, a lot of puns. Um, which, I think this is the last one, so once I get out of this fight, I'll go and show you one of the puns that I found, which was hilarious. But I have to get out of the battle first. And it takes a little bit of time, but... Sometimes it's just one of those things like, why does this take so long? I mean, I'm going to kick its butt. That's a given at this point. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna die during the battle. Nothing can possibly go that wrong that would cause me to lose. So why does it take so long? Now I would also point this out. Um this is an RPG, so you do gain experience and you do level up. As you can see, I gained 150 experience. I don't think I'm close to leveling up yet. Oh, yep, but this was the last house. So we gotta go find Little Bones. So we can get to those witches. And then, yeah, my candy gets stolen by a kid with braces. That brace face just stole our candy. Hey, come back here. That's our ticket home. It is your ticket home. Kind of-ish. Uh, see, I need to go this way, right? Yes. It's hard for me to keep track of where I need to go sometimes. Look, it's a guy with a banana. Some weird kid with brace. Yeah, okay, I already saw that one. There we go. And then we follow the weird kid with braces. And he piles up a bunch of leaves, and apparently, somehow, that completely blocks your path. You cannot get through it. So, like, hitting on it, running into it, I can't get through this. I have to be the pterodactyl to be able to get through it. But you just blow the leaves out of the way. Doesn't make sense, but, you know, whatever. But let me show you that one thing that I was going to show you, one of the puns that I found. I think it's further down here. Yep, there he is. Little kid in a devil get up on a hickory stump with a golden fiddle. Yes, you challenge him to a music competition with your clown horn. I already did it because it's just so goofy that it doesn't really translate well to video. You're going to have to check it out yourself if you want to see it. It's just that goofy. Um... So let's go over here and progress the story a bit. 
You know, we're trying to get our candy back. And this is where we get a large chunk of the story. A little bit of explanation of what's going on. Nice kid. You know, just wants some candy, but his mom won't let him. You know, because obviously he has braces trying to get his teeth straightened out, I guess. I don't know. And his very, very over-obsessive mother. I'm sorry, if your kid is regularly that scared of you, it probably qualifies as child abuse. Though, I could understand her, you know, this is the rules, you broke the rules, I'm going to be a little bit upset, you know, whatever. But that, yeah, that is overkill. Probably, yeah. Very, very upset, parent. <laughs> uh, teaching him the evils of Halloween. You'll be sorry. Yeah, very intimidating. Sucks to be that kid. I think that kid was our dentist. Yes, that is the dentist from earlier on in the game that I didn't show in this video. Uh, basically, the dentist is the bad guy. Which I guess fits for a game that's based on children going trick-or-treating. Um, but the dentist is trying to destroy Halloween, so he went back in time to get a doll, a talisman that releases all of the monsters again same monsters that we saw before but he did it with the help of this chronos thing basically it's a i don't know bird-like thing that looks like it came from legend of zelda majora's mask it controls time and creates time portals stuff like that it's strange. Like I said, I don't like time travel. Time travel annoys the crap out of me. There's statue people. Just kids dressed up as statues. And there's an achievement to make them bust a move. But I have no idea how to do that. I've progressed in every way I can think of. But I have no idea how to get them to bust a move. And no, for the record, it's not my magical musical horn. I don't understand. Wee. Hi, Skull Guy. Here's your candy. It's the mother mother load. Yes, yes, yes. Skull Kid. Actual Skull Kid. That's not a kid in costume or anything. That's apparently Justice Skull. Very round skull, but okay, let's roll with it. <laughs> but... Yeah, apparently he can't go trick-or-treating on Halloween because he's just a Skull Kid. Which, now I think about it, it fits with the whole Majora's Mask joke I made earlier. Yeah, of course the boat broke. I mean, duh. That's shocking. I mean, seriously. Yeah, a skeleton don't fix boats. Yes, yes, yes. There's a lot of dialogue in this game. It's a very wordy game. That's not a bad thing, again. But, you know, it's a very wordy game. I'm supposed to fix a boat, so I come to Earl, the boat mechanic. And he wants 50 bucks to fix the boat. Ain't no charity. Bring him 50 bucks. We got 50 bucks. I have 50 bucks because I went to a jazz concert and got paid 50 bucks to play the horn. Yes, the clown horn. Go go play this game, seriously. <laughs> it's like, what, 15 bucks on Steam right now? It's worth it. It's worth it. Yes, he got 50 bucks. Yes, he's happy. He's going to be eating it today. And he gives me an ore. Instead of fixing the boat, he gives me an ore that's worth 20 bucks. With 30 bucks in labor. Okay. Complicated, apparently. And now they're closed. Of course. Yeah, being screwed by a mechanic. Hmm, who would have thunk it? Ooh, come on. Okay, there we go. Then we go to the Skull Kid. 
who gets really, really hopped up on sugar. Yeah. Little bones. We've got an ore. Oh, hey, you found my ore. I was wondering what happened to that. Won't be as fast as the fan, but it'll work. And then we go off. Somehow in that direction with that ore. No idea how he pulls that off, but, you know, physics and all that. Oh, we're also on the wrong pier. I just realized that. This pier that we're on is actually the one right in front of the mechanic's shop, but we went further down to get into the boat. Very strange. And we very, very slowly progress the story. I could probably skip it, but I don't want to skip the cutscenes in case I miss part of the story. I've done that several times the first time I played this game. I accidentally hit B, being experienced with the Nintendo, and uh, skip cutscenes. My bad. It's my stop, too. I'm out of here. You can keep the boat. Wasn't his anyways. Chucks the oar, and magically... The boat's fixed. Okay. Now this is one area that I wanted to show you. And there's a reason for that. In the first costume quest, there was no place where you could go to just level grind. However, here, if you defeat an enemy, it respawns. So on this island is basically level grinding central. You get 200 experience points for every battle you fight, but it does take a lot of experience points to level up. It takes a long time to level up in this game. I mean, I guess that makes sense. It has to, considering they're jamming 10 levels into 4 hours. Or 8 hours if you're me. But somebody who's really dedicated could probably spend that time and just level up to level 10 before the first boss. And, you know, beat the game without a problem. Now, I'm assuming that level 10 is the max because of two things. One, oops, if I remember correctly, level 10 was the max in the previous game. And then level 14 was the max in the DLC. Um, so it would make sense that level 10 would also be the max in this game until DLC comes out where it raises it to level 14. Now, the second reason I think that's the case is when I beat this game, I was level 10, and I beat the game hands down. Easy battle, easy boss battle. It's not like, uh, what's his name, Big Bones from the last game? Oh, that battle is difficult. Battle is hard. Even if you max out the level, that battle is hard. But, you know, once you figure out how to beat the final boss, like the method you need to do, he's easy. It's really easy. Tore him down. First try, nobody died. Came close, but nobody died. So that's why I think level 10 is max. So if you try really hard, you could probably get to level 10 on this island. It would take some time and some dedication, but hey, you're talking to the guy who made level 35 in Final Fantasy VIII before he fought Ifrit. And we need a fountain, which I believe is, yep, right here. Alright, that shard dude that I just beat, that's him right there. He already respawned. Whack! And I love smacking him upside the head. But I probably should move on and at least show the boss battle before I end this episode. Well, the first boss battle, I want I want to at least show off the joke about Majora's Mask. Boing. Smack. Though, I guess if I was smart, I would probably level grind here a little bit, get up to possibly the next level, where I can go back to the future, as strange as that sounds, and learn how to uh, counter an attack before I fight the first boss. But I didn't need it in the in the first time I played it. Probably won't need it now. So, let's just 
skip ahead to when I beat this love beat this battle. That battle's beat, and I'm at the point where I'm continuing the storyline. So we found these witches, I guess, and we have to convince them to protect their talisman better. I guess I don't know. Um. They're just out having a barbecue for Halloween, I guess. I don't know. Dennis is coming from the future to steal your talisman. I don't know how you know about the talisman, but I can assure you of one thing. The burgers are delicious. You guys should join us. And then basically what you gotta do is you gotta talk to everybody and try to convince them that, hey, the talisman is in danger. I don't know what they're supposed to do with it, though, thinking about it. Um, yeah, actually, I am mildly curious. What are you supposed to do with, I mean, how are, are they, what, what, do, what are the kids expecting they're going to do with a talisman? Are they going to hand it over to the kids and the kids are going to protect it? I don't know. There's a dentist coming to steal some sort of talisman from you. Why would a dentist want her talisman? That's ridiculous. Our dad has been guarding, guarding the monster gate since he was a kid. I would assume that's the ghosty portal thingy behind them. And then one more person to talk to. We're here to warn you. You're in danger here. What the... Yeah. Dorsila! Main... Er... Secondary character from the previous game. <laughs> Why are you trying to rile me up? You get annoyed... Why won't... Why won't anybody listen to me? It's like... Yeah, the talisman's right here. Which makes me wonder... If this is... A predestination paradox. Would he have been able to grab the talisman so easily... If those two... Three... Weren't around... Trying to convince everybody to protect the talisman better? Like... Wouldn't the dentist have... You know, gone after the parents, assuming the parents were holding the talisman? So, very strange. But as you can see from the guy in the background, that's the guy I was telling you about. Something that looks like a enemy from Majora's Mask. And it fits, too, with the whole time travel thing. But the portal is now open, and the monsters are coming through. Though, it turned out at the end of the last game... That the monsters weren't actually that bad. Chronoculus. Chronoculus. Chronoculus? That sounds right, I guess. I don't know. Everything seems to be running a little bit slow, probably from my recording software. But yes, this is the first boss, and this will be a little bit of a difficult battle because. The first time I fought, the first thing I did was get rid of Candy Corn. But uh, I did do a little bit of level, level grinding, so I was at least one level higher than I am now. So this might be a new thing. Or this might be a little bit more difficult than it was. Uh, that's healing, so I don't need the special attack at this moment. I just need to beat on Chronicleus. And actually remember to hit the button. Boom. Oh, I could have used her special attack. I guess. Candy Corn doesn't waver. And you are going to attack her. Haven't learned to counter yet, so I can't counter. That's not necessarily a problem right now. Though it would be nice if I could counter. I don't know how well that would work in this... Look, I skipped it. I just like that. I like the idea that you can skip them. After a while, it gets really old. Time freeze. Basically, you freeze and you don't get your turn. Which kind of sucks because, you know, if you would have time froze candy corn, that wouldn't have been a problem. But you time froze the clown, and the clown is kind of useful. Candy corn is tastier than circuit peanuts. I know a lot of people who do not like candy corn. Am I the only person in the world that actually likes candy corn? I really do. I like candy corn. 
Boss Battle Stage 1. Complete. And then this is where you gotta know how to attack the boss. And of course, Candy Corn does nothing. Because it's, you know, Candy Corn. Candy Corn does nothing. But we got to attack the clock. Boing, boing, smack! Smack! You know, standard boss battle techniques kind of thing. Attack the thing that isn't the boss directly to be able to defeat the boss. Candy corn readies itself. Refreshing. And the boss re healed itself, so now I have to beat it down a bit more. So we break, it, break out the clock again, and then beat up the clock some more. But the clock doesn't regen health, which is good. Oh, I'm attacking the wrong thing. I didn't want the mecha mechanist. Though I probably should just kill the mechanist right now. Just so it's one less thing attacking me. Candy Corn is sick of this charade. Oop. Just as long as you don't use your freeze time attack, that annoys the hell out of me. Bounce attack, bounce, bounce, smack! And this right here probably sums up most of what costume quest in general is. It's just fighting. Lots and lots of fighting. And puns. Lots of puns. I should probably heal. Skip. Just because I've seen it a billion and a half times, it's annoying. I don't remember if you could skip the last one. But I'm really glad you could skip these ones. Candy Corn was born in Philadelphia. I wonder if that's true. I might have to look that up to see if candy corn was actually invented in Philly. I'll have to check that out. Maybe this is maybe this will be an educational situation for me. Was candy corn made in Philadelphia? Of course, I'm sure somebody in the comments would probably know as well. Boom. Come around and chronicle us. Candy corn's good side. Time freeze. Do the candy corn. Ah. Superhero. Superhero is useful. Smack. There we go. Now I can beat on the clock again. That's fine. My cronies can help me end your life. Or whatever he actually said there. Don't know. Candy corn has worn out his welcome. Attack the clock. Bounce attack. Boing, boing. Smash! One more attack ought to do it. Yep, one more attack ought to do it, which sucks because Ren was stunned. Candy Corn doesn't think of itself as a piece of something or other. It goes too fast. I can't read and talk at the same time. Candy Corn, Candy Corn. Yes! Froze Candy Corn. Candy Corn wasn't exactly doing anything anyways. So, freezing Candy Corn is uh, perfectly fine for me. Ah! Crap! The clock had five health points left. Oh, that's annoying. I didn't even notice that chrono Cr Chronoculus regen health. That's annoying. But it doesn't look like it's a problem, though. My health is fine outside of candy corn, Cam. Block. You know what would have been really annoying and I'm really glad that they didn't do? is if he would have used the time freeze thing on all of us all at once. That would have been annoying. Because that pretty much would have been end game right there. Of course, that does beg the question, why don't bosses do that? I guess maybe it's a limitation like uh, my limit breaks. You have to build up to it or something. I don't know. And by the time you built up to it, the last one ran out. Possibly. Bounce attack. Bounce. Bounce. Smack. Uh, still 200 more HP. 
And eventually you get to the point where it's like, okay, when is this particular battle going to end? Uh, next turn. Apparently. Which is cool. Candy Corn has a prior engagement. Now, I did see that one before, but it was in the previous game. So I don't think I've seen any repeats of the Candy Corn jokes this game. Oh, I'm hitting the wrong thing, aren't I? I'm hitting Chronoculus. Damn it. There we go. I broke the timepiece. Naked without his timepiece. Candy Corn likes to watch. Time freeze. Yeah. Monty's very low on health, but guess what? I'm hitting the wrong thing again. Damn it. You do have to pay attention in this. If you don't pay attention to it, you're gonna attack the wrong thing and you're gonna mess up. Now I should probably heal. Because I'm not going to be able to finish this battle in the next attack. Since I don't have both of them. Plus I didn't really want Candy Corn to die anyways. Though I don't think it really matters. If the Candy Corn dies. He was in the battle. Boing, boing. Oh, I did it again. I suck at this. Well, it's not a problem anymore. Ugh. Keep telling myself to pay attention. Totally not paying attention. There we go. Beat the boss. No! How did you defeat me? I killed your clock. You made your weak, po weak point very obvious. Ah, uh, I got another card. Max out one hero special meter. You can eventually buy a card that gets, uh all three of the special meters up. And yeah, that's it for the first boss battle. So I'm going to end it here. I'm going to highly recommend this game. Go out, buy it. It's on Steam. Don't need much hardware to play it, which is not terribly surprising. The polygon count is not exactly very high. And yeah, so I will end it here, and I will say to you guys, as always, keep playing the game, and have a happy Halloween. That was messed up. Unskippable cutscene is unskippable.